I would like to present to you, if I may, to start with uh, Dr. Felix Amaraz, who is a uh, PhD professor, the Peter T. Kwan, distinguished professor emeritus of Borderland History at the University of Texas here in San Antonio. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, distinguished guest of honor, the Honorable Jesus Maria Ramon, Madam President General of the Republic of Texas, the Honorable Karen Thompson, the Lady Chair of the Alamo Committee, Senorita Melinda Navarro, venerable esteemed members of the audience, and particularly the members of the Ramon family, bienvenidos a San Antonio. Indeed, this is a memorable and historic day in local and regional history, and especially in the annals of the Alamo. For longer than a half century, historians of the borderlands and friends of regional history have advocated a change in attitude regarding the trans-Rio Grande relations and research in this rich heritage that binds both sides of this arbitrary international divide. As a young scholar in formation, I observed that the tone of the American historians had forgiven George III for dispatching mercenaries and soldiers of fortune to fight the British Americans, uh, the Patriots, in a struggle that English historians continue to describe to this day as the first quarrel with America. During that year-long observance, I asked rhetorically in a public address Perhaps it is time for Texas historians to begin contemplating the prospect of forgiving General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana for his combat decision that Goliath the Alamo and San Jacinto. Except for the earlier works of scholars, the general public is unaware of the saga of the Spanish colonial era in Texas that unfolded on the other side of the Great Divide of 1836. The contributions of Diego Ramon and Domingo Ramon to Texas before the Alamo will provide generous filling to that tapestry. The story of how they endured the challenges of ordinary life in a far frontier was through their extraordinary commitment to God and King, which constitutes the warp and the weft, or the filling of the tapestry of Spanish Texas. Muchas gracias y muy buenas tardes. President General, it's all yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is indeed a pleasure to be here to see this wonderful family that has come today uh, to hear our words and our appreciation to a family that has done so much for Mexico for the Republic of Texas, for Texas, and we're honored to have you here today. We hope that this, as we've talked about, enhancing history and uh, bringing forward a lot of the research that we know needs to be done so that our countries have a complete picture and we do bridge that gap between what is the complete history of those borderlands and what was happening in Spanish colonial Mexico. It's an illustrious history that the Ramon family is tied to and it ties them to Texas history and to the Alamo. So at this time, if the Senator would please come up here, I have a couple of things to present. certificate that goes along with this flag that flew over the Alamo that we are presenting to you today in honor of you, your family, and the family history that you provide to us. We also, from our library, have a copy of a document that his, has his ancestor's signature. 
and we thought you might like this document. This is a copy. We do have the original in our DRT library and as your family, your children, grandchildren might be writing some papers on the history of your family, I think you will find coming to this library will be very beneficial and we appreciate you doing this so much. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Wentworth is a strong supporter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas and the history of Texas and he is also making this presentation to you and Senator Wentworth would you like to say just a couple of words for a fellow senator on this occasion we would love to have you say something thank you so much if you stop and think about what we're what we're here today to do is to look back uh, three centuries in history in this area which is uh, really remarkable. Um, we thought it was quite a, di a big deal um, when we celebrated, uh, not too many years ago, the bicentennial of the independence of the United States. We're celebrating something today that for this day is, uh, is as old as it gets in terms of our history. And uh, I'm honored and pleased to be here, and especially with a, a fellow senator from Mexico. Thank you. Thank you, President Karen Thompson, and Alamo Committee Chair Melinda Navarro, for this great welcome and honor you have bestowed upon me and the Ramon family on this day. For recognition also to our lineal ancestors, Diego and Domingo Ramon. These pioneers were not only soldiers of the Spanish army in the far frontiers of North America, but more importantly, this father and son were instrumental in the formation of Texas before the Alamo. My ancestors were not conquistadores, they were colonizers, and their exploration of the wilderness left an unforgettable imprint upon the landscape of Spanish Texas. During the early Spanish colonial era in North America, Spain claimed all land masses now called Texas, but the government lacked resources that would have allowed them to establish strategic settlements and control over the region in an effective manner. As long as other European colonial powers remained far from Texas, the land remained a vast wilderness. All of this changed when two French intruders came to the desired land. Robert La Salle in 1684 and Louis Saint-Denis in 1714. The government of New Spain responded with energy and determination. Alonso de Leon led the first response and aided by my ancestor, Diego Ramon, that resulted in the establishment of the first mission within the pine forest of East Texas. 25 years later, both Diego and his son, Domingo Ramon, executed the second response with settlers, missionaries, and livestock, which resulted in Spain's permanent occupation of Texas. Among the missions Don Diego founded was Francisco de Solano, established March 1st, 1700, in a close proximity to the Rio Grande del Norte. Years later, this mission was rebuilt near the banks of the San Antonio River and in time became to be known as the Alamo, the shrine we stand in today. Don Diego Ramon and his son Domingo Ramon stood at the crossroads of history, deciding whether Texas would become dominant under French influence, like Louisiana, or Spanish domain as it is today. If the Spanish government had not responded within the termination of the French intruders, Texas would have not developed as a land of missions, presidios, ranchos, and villas. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to read an extract of Diego Ramon's report 
or the founding of the mission of San Francisco Solano later renamed the Alamo. It says, on this day, March 1700, I, Diego Ramon, supervised the foundation of a new mission located approximately two leagues less than six miles from the Rio Grande del Norte, irrigated by fresh water from a natural spring. With the assistance of Fray Antonio Olivares and Fray Francisco Hidalgo, we gathered Indian neophytes from the region to convert them within the mission's plaza. With the consent of the Franciscan friars, I named the mission and Pueblo San Francisco Solano. Later, Domingo Ramon, his son, recorded the following recollection of the local region in his diary of 1716, expedition into Texas. On this day, April 25th, 1716, the Franciscan religious arrived at Presidio San Juan Bautista and the requisite supplies were gathered for the entrada into Texas. I started my journey and the caravan left camp for Texas with a complement of 75 persons. I, Domingo Ramon, second lieutenant, Diego Ramon, my brother, Father Isidro Felix de Espinosa and other Franciscan lay brothers and soldiers, accompanied also by my chief guide, Captain Luis Saint-Denis, Juan de Medar, and Pedro Largen, all of whom who were from France. In addition, there were women, a six-year-old boy, a four-year-old girl, two Indian guides, and three Indian converts in charge of the cattle. As the entrada approached the vicinity of the Rio San Antonio, Domingo recorded the following comment on the date of May 14, 1716. This day, I marched in a northerly direction to the same mesquite brush with plenty of pasture for the livestock, crossing two dry arroyos until we arrived at a spring on a level land that we called San Pedro, which was sufficient to water and support a city. We entered a beautiful amenity of walnuts, grapevines, willows, elms, and other varieties of trees situated more than a quarter of a league from the San Antonio River. We were able to cross the river, which is large but not deep, as the current reaches our stirrups. We arrived upstream to look for a resting place and we found a good one because it had a nice camping area with good trees and pasture. We had found the source and the headwaters of the San Antonio River. At this time, on behalf of my family, I would like to present to the daughters of the Republic of Texas, Karen Thompson and Melinda Navarro, the Alamo Committee Chair, with the original copies made from the existing diaries of Diego and Domingo Ramon, on the reports of the founding of Mission San Francisco Solano and of Domingo's 1716 expedition into Texas. These copies are made directly from the report of my ancestors presently existing within the National Archives of the Republic of Mexico. Thank you once again for honoring me and my family and for recognizing the important achievements of our ancestors Diego and Domingo Ramon in Texas before the Alamo. Thank you very much. <laughs>